Merry Christmas and welcome back. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're back with our third iteration of the um, Christmas discussion sitting Matthew's house couch silly hat videos. What silly hat? Ser serious hat videos. Um, we're uh, we're going to do something slightly different and slightly more fun as well this year. Just to explain, um, I've always been fascinated by this idea of eggnog. You ever had eggnog? I've never tried it. The Americans go on about it, and from what I gather, it's like an egg-based alcoholic drink, or something similar anyway. Um, so what we've done is we've got some eggnog to try for the first time. I've never even smelled the stuff, because it sounds utterly disgusting. You know, it, like it's like egg, I but... Think, uh, ugh. I think we're going to have to brace our stomachs for this oh, one. Oh, jeez. So, um, for your entertainment, there's actually Advocat, which I believe is like Dutch alcoholic eggnog. I really don't know where the ins and outs are. Basically, all I know is it's... It's 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 strong and eggy and disgusting looking and what it reminded me I looked at it and it's what the colour reminds me of. See if you uh, opened a jar of mayonnaise and you you were going fishing or hiking up somewhere in the hills and you you came across a, a stone bothy which is like an old fashioned stone houses that are dotted around in Scotland. Um, if you brought some mayonnaise, made a sandwich, and then just left that jar of mayonnaise and went that's fine, we'll leave it for the next people, and then came back six years later and it's still there. Yeah, but it shouldn't it shouldn't taste like that. It shouldn't taste like that. It's, That's it's the meant to be it. drinkable. It's, so. it's supposed to be palatable, but then so is caviar. So, yeah. Mm, you ever had caviar? No. Oh, jeez. Right. So Jackie is going to come in, and uh, this Here's is our first. Glasses. Thank you. Yes. We're going to try this stuff for the first time. Look at. I mean, look at it. That's not even a coloured bottle. That's the. I don't have my glasses on. So I don't want to do this. Oh, it's just a Right. So. Managed. Let's have a. Is it? <laughs> oh, it's it's thick. thick. Is it lumpy? That's no. enough. That's enough. No, 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 that's no, enough. No, no, that. no, the, uh, the rules the are we have to finish <coughs> this before the end of the video. Hey! Like, hey! That's fine, no, hey. Give him more. no, 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 that's fine. I don't think you've got enough, mate. Jeez. Yeah, he's not got enough. Look, mine's just full. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> you cheat. <laughs> Let's have a... Cheers. Oh. Oh. What's. Vodka. It's oh, stinks. Vodka. Right. Um. So, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Oh. Oh. Ah. oh, that's minging. I think it's quite an acquired taste. It's like, ah. Oh, the other taste is even worse. Oh, it's it's like. Ah. It's, it's like someone's. It is. It's, it's like egg. It, you can smell. You can taste the egg. It's like liquidized egg, but it also tastes like. Um, you, you know this stuff you get at the dentist, the mouthwash. Mix. Do you get? Is that what you're getting? That's. What, oh. oh, I don't know what I'm getting. I'm getting my dinner soon. So. So you got to finish that before the end of the video. <laughs> right. So what we're talking about this year is, as usual, we're going to talk about. Um, <coughs> RC we recommend for beginners because we do that every year because it yep. could change. And then we're going to talk about our RC, personal RC of the year 2018, which we haven't discussed with each other properly. And the third one is we're going to talk about our very favourite RC manufacturers, just so you guys are clear of where we stand in the hobby. Yes. So we'll begin and kick off with a beginner RC we'd recommend. So, yeah. yeah. You are you want to go first? Well, what we what we did previously is we did this last two years and both years the ECX Ruckus won for both of us, we were yes. agreed. We yes. both recommend that. But pricing has changed, things have changed, new new products on the market, so we're going to see where we sit. So feel free to take it away if you like, Matthew. Well first of all I would give a shout out to the Ruckus again. Um just a shout out though, because we have covered that. Um my other one would be just for the pure enjoyment of having your first RC would be the lunchbox because yeah yeah you right yeah there? yeah keep going <laughs> so basically <laughs> the lunchbox it comes as a kit and you always you always get enjoyment out of building your own kit yeah I agree and you get hop up parts and whatnot so you can personalise it to your own taste and it's just a bundle of joy to play with it is it's a you know, great fun truck as well it's, it's brilliant. brilliant 
Um, so obviously the lunchbox is a show. And that's what? Around about 100 pound retail, depending on what model you yeah, go for. Aye. Black editions maybe so, a bit more. Yeah, I think the black edition was something like 110 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Normal one was 90 pounds or whatever. You can get uh, an expert built one which is ready to run, but that's a fair amount more expensive. It's about 100 and what, 170 or something. And I think yeah, the, yeah you lose the you the lose value out, of it. Yeah, you the, lose out on the building of it. Though. Yeah, the building is is part of the fun. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, because as Tammy, you get loads of parts for it and whatnot. Ah, yeah, so that's, right. that's well covered. Mm -hmm. My other one would be the FTX Carnage, because that's a reasonably priced beginner's brush truck. Yeah, which is about 125 pounds. Very but, cheap. Yeah. Same again, ready plenty of run. parts, Everything ready to run, yeah. um, sure it's waterproof, it is waterproof, and you can give it hell, and it seems to be quite a sturdy truck. It is quite a sturdy truck, plus the, the good thing about the, uh, the, the, what's it called again, the carnage, carnage, is the internals between the brush and the brushless system are identical, there's no tougher gears or anything in the brushless version, so if you want to upgrade that to brushless in a later date, you know the drivetrain can take it, yes. which is quite an important thing. It is, it is definitely, and yeah. also... The best thing about it, well, one of the key features, is it is waterproof, so your radio gear mask protected, and brushless systems are durable enough as well, and you get plenty of fun out of brushless system. Yeah, yeah. So brushed, brushed out long. Is it brushed full well, carnage? The, yeah, brushed carnage as a beginner because it is cheaper because the brushed model, yeah. the brushless model, it's not is so obviously, bad, is it? The brushless model is about two hundred pounds, or just shy of that. Uh, the brush model is one hundred and twenty-five pounds, so that's perfect for a beginner. Yeah. So if you, if you, if for example, you you give your son or whatever uh, 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 an RC car for their, their Christmas and it's one hundred twenty-five pounds, and they don't really take to the hobby, it's not a disaster. Yeah. If you bought them something at three or four hundred pounds and they don't take to it, that's a bit more hard to swallow, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the the good thing about it as well, because it's brushed, it's not as quick or as powerful. So if you do, <laughs> if you do get at least that that way, you're not if you if you break it or it's more controllable. But if you get the brush brushless version. It's a bit more of a handful because you've obviously got quite a bit more power, you do. and it will still be a you sore, a sore <coughs> you one do. to swallow after a two hundred pound truck. Hard to swallow. I can think of something. Else. Yeah. Um, enjoy your mayonnaise, your old mayonnaise. Do you know, it's like custard. It's yeah, oh, it is. It's like old custard. It is, yeah. Alcoholic old custard. But then the someone's record. someone's broken egg into it and whisked it as well. For the record, I hate custard. <laughs> so, I think he picked this on purpose. Right, so was, was it just the two you were wanting to talk about then, the ruckus and the carnage? Well, it was, the, and, it and was more, box, it, was, it was a combination between all, I'll okay. shout out to the ruckus, but for pure fun, you would go with the lunchbox. The lunchbox, but okay. For Fair a banana, enough. yeah, the, the carnage was... Well, I had something good. quite similar vein in mind, because obviously, um, I started with, you didn't start at the Tamiya, your, your, your RC career, but I started with the Tamiya and lots of people over generations have started as a first RC car has always been a Tamiya. And I feel it's a very good way into the hobby, having a Tamiya, because you get the joy of building a kit. And it means that, see when people break stuff nowadays, we, we live in a very much break and forget, break and chuck away, chuck it in the bin, it's broken. Whereas if you've built it yourself from kit parts and you know the kit parts ins and out because you've built it, you're more prepared to you know, spend time and money repairing it and building it again. You understand how it works because you've built it. And it's a good bonding situation between parent and child if they help them build it through. And so um, I like the idea of a Tamiya for a first kit, but some of them are a bit costly. Yes. So I was looking at them and I, I like the look of the Tamiya Racing Fighter, which is a buggy... Excuse me. Oh, is that coming back up? Oh, jeez, <laughs> honestly. And it's a, it's a buggy where it's got the DT03, DT03 chassis. Now... And you can get a few variants of it, but the one I was looking at retails at around about 90 to 100 pounds. So it's not breaking the bank, but there is a version of it for around about that money that comes with the torque tuned motor and it comes with oil filled shocks. And I think it might come with bearings as well, but I'm not entirely sure. But you know, for 90 pounds, there's a Tamiya with oil filled shocks and a decent motor. It's not bad, it's brushed motor, br brushed air car, but obviously you'll need to get radio gear and speed control and stuff. That will bump up the price towards maybe 150, maybe even a little bit higher. But you are getting the joy of building it yourself, and it is a Tamiya. You know the part support's always going to be there. You know all the infinite upgrades and hop ups available. You can make it unique. It's your Tamiya. It's different from everybody else's because the upgrades you've chosen, and there's there's loads of them. So that's that's always a good thing. And you can pick the color. You can spray paint it yourself. You learn all the basic skills from one set. And that's quite cool. Yes, I like that. Um, so that's that's one of mine. The other one I was thinking about is: Do you remember I had the Maverick Strada? And it was yeah. a terrible monster truck. Yeah, that was the eight shock or something. I think it was. Yeah, it was, and yeah. it was it was like robust as anything along the chassis. But then the shock towers were flopping around, so it was completely fine. And it broke the first time I used it. It was a horrible truck. The new Stradas look really good. Really, really good. I was looking at the new Strada.
So we had to stop the recording there because we're using Matthew's phone and um, it can only do 10 minute intervals so I don't know how far we got. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out in post edit because we're professional. I'm professional. You never hear. You never do. Right, so our song about the Maverick. Oh, jeez, it's coming up again. <laughs> you should maybe flush it down there. Drink. Oh yeah, good idea. Good idea. Do you know? I, I see it's there, right? And you think I've got a drink. I'm gonna drink that while it's there. And then you have a sip of it. And you're like, oh no, there's a reason why it's still there. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. Right, Maverick Strata, MTXT. There's a few other ones, but these are the two I really like. Local. That's so brushed as well. Brushed, but the the thing is, it's Maverick, so it's HPI. You've got the good parts of support, you've got the good quality materials, good quality plastics and good quality metals. Again, it's got the eight shock absorbers, oil filled, fully ball raced, ready to run. All you need is the double A batteries for it, nothing else. Everything else is included. You get the slow charger, you get you the... You don't even get the double A's. You don't get... You, you get a nickel metal hydride, it's only an 1800, so the battery doesn't last that long. But the new shells look really great, the paint jobs look really great, the quality of it looks really nice, it looks really nicely laid out. Tough shaft drive system, so you know it's going to be reliable. And they do look like they've hopped up the the, the, the quality and the reliability, and it does look really smart. And it's 150 pound retail, but that's for a premium brand. You know, Maverick is HBI, so it's a pretty good deal overall, I think. So that's another one I was talking about. And then we get to the, HP, the, the ECX Ruckus. Yes. The thing about the Ruckus is, I was so prepared to say not the Ruckus this time because the Horizon hobby prices have gone insane, berserk over the last year and a bit. Absolutely. Do you remember we talked about the ECX amp? Yes. The 90 pound buggy? Yeah. That car is now exactly the same as it was. No difference. Do you know how much they've gone for now? How much? 160. Seriously? Or 150, sorry. Is that? Just 150. For, just just, just money pure rabbit. inflation, right? 100. So I was like, the amp's gone for 150. What have they put the ruckus up to? It's just 160 or 170, is it 170? So it was, I'm sure it's just, you know, 155, yeah. Was it, no, that's on the set, was it on 170 retail? Oh, yeah, yeah. 170 retail. Yeah, yeah. So it's gone up a little bit over the years, but not much, not compared to the amp. The amp's almost doubled. This thing's gone up 20 quid or so. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's still worth it though, because it's, it is a, a super well, reliable Well, that's the problem. Therein lies the problem, because 170 pounds is within 10 pounds of the Armour Granite. Right. Right? And they're both two wheel drive, rear wheel drive, two rear wheel drive monster truck, one ten. And the Armour Granite's got a great name for itself. So I was thinking, is the EZX Ruckus is worth 170, but is it worth within 10 pounds of the Armour Granite? And then I was looking at them both. They're both very sturdy trucks. They're both parts are available for both. Um, you you now have Armour supported by Horizon Hobby as well. So if you can get parts for one, you can get it for the other. But the differences are. The ECX has got a spectrum radio system, just like Lossy's do. Yeah. The Arma has tactic stuff. I've had a tactic radio before and it was crap. It was light and cheap and nasty and brittle and horrible. So the, the ruckus wins in radio systems. The second thing is the granite comes with a nickel metal hydride. The ruckus comes with a lipo. Score two to the ruckus. The granite comes with a very slow charger, trickle charger. The Ruckus comes with a two hour charger. That's not bad for an RTR. It's not bad. For a Lipo battery, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Two hour charge isn't really bad because then you get seven hours and 14 hours. And it's not bad. So, it's a, yeah, it comes with a trickle charger. Yes. So, that will take about five, six hours to charge. Really? Well, the armor does, yeah. yeah. Whereas things are two hour ones. Not bad. So, you get a faster battery, more voltage, you get a better charger, you get a better radio system, and you. Um, you get fuse because it's now a Horizon Hobby. You get the fuse radio uh, electronics, which is what comes in losses. So you get a better quality radio electronics as well. And you're beginning to think, hold on, for only a ten pound more, oh, sorry, for ten pound less, you're getting you know better radio system. You're getting better electronics. You're getting a better battery. You're getting a better charger. I'm actually thinking it's worth that ten pound. I think I think the armor doesn't make up for that. No. I don't think it does. So I would say between the Armour Granite for 180 and the ECX Ruckus for 170, there's too many plus points. Well, I'd still say Ruckus. Well, there you go. If, if it comes ready to run and it's got all good quality parts, 
Well, you'd rather have spec yeah, from the tactic. Yeah, and, and then, then it's £10 more for the, next, for, for the armor. Yeah. But then you might not like the radio gear, so then you're spending another £50, £60. Well, pounds the radio gear, I'm sure it will function fine. It just doesn't feel as nice yeah. as a, a Spectrum. No, but a Spectrum, I mean, if you don't like yeah, it. Yeah, and the Spectrum, yeah. I mean, you get Spectrum in, in the Lossy 5. That's a £1,200 truck, you get Spectrum radio. Yeah. So it's obviously a good radio system. I use a Spectrum in my uh, Lossy Mini AT, it's awesome. So you get that, you get the better radio gear, you get arguably better electronics, you get definitely a better battery and better charger, and it's £10 cheaper. I've got to say, I'm going to go for the Ruckus on that one. I'm surprised, because I thought, ooh, £10 next to Granite. I'm always a shout out for the Ruckus. Ruckus. So, got mine so yeah, I would say Tamiya Racing Fighter, ECX Ruckus again, or try to look at the Maverick. To be honest, if it was my money right now, I'd try the Maverick. It just looks so cool. You just love the E-Shocks. No, it's not that, man. If you saw, I'll show you a yeah. picture of them later, honestly. So there was that. You That's bought, my... you the first Maverick you got because it had eight shots. Oh, yeah, I know, but it, it was, was like, terrible. this thing's going to be a it was rubbish. So, yeah, my recommended first RC car, I'm going to go for the Maverick Strata XT. Nice. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's us. That's for that. Shall we pause and do we the shall, next? We shall, whoa. All right, All right okay. What was the next part? Oh, RC of the year. RC of the year. Right, so, second subject. We're talking about RC of the year 2018. This is a personal thing. This isn't us going, oh, this was the best RC truck or car or whatever. This is just what our favourites of 2018. Yep. Um, me or you? Uh, I'm happy to go first. Right, go for it. So, I picked the rocket knob. Um, <laughs> I picked, what I went for is the lossy Super Rock Ray. It's a super Rock Ray. Super Rock Ray. Beast. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Beast. One, one hell of a truck. Um, it's one six scale, four wheel drive. Um, the good thing is, you can go four, four cell or you can go eight cell. You can go yeah. four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight. Eight cell. Eight cell. You, you would go for the eight cell. What a monster. Yeah. So it's out the box. If you eight cell, it's, it's a low KV motor, but it's got masses of torque. Yeah, 750 KV it is. Yeah. What, so, was, what was the speed? My what was the speed? 50 miles an hour plus. 55 miles an hour with an 8 cell battery. Yeah, from an RTR. For, from a truck that's. Oh, what size. a monster. So, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, um, it's tough as nails. Tough as nails. And you should see some of the videos, the reviews in that one, though. They're, they're massive, they're, they're, they're great to watch. Um, and it's just brilliant. That, that would be my pick. It would be your pick. Yeah. So, you've got this. Uh, it's almost like. Because it's, it's based. It's the same. I think it's the same platform overall as the old Super. Baja, right? Baja, yeah. Which is a big, you know, a big uh, short course truck that lost you released. And then they've, they've taken the same platform, turned it into a rock racer, yeah. sort of cage, truggy thing and things. But it's got the solid, solid rear axle. Yeah. Massive front, push bones on it. Oh, huge, yeah. yeah. Big shocks. It's got front independent suspension and solid rear axle. Yeah. Metal drivetrain. Just. It's Mod. a beast. And beast. They're, they're, I mean, they are, they are expensive, don't get me wrong. They're what, about 880 quid. 880 quid. Oh. I mean, but. You know, if you had the money, you would you would get one. Yeah. You would. I would. Yeah, I'd yeah. get one. I'd get one. I'd, so, yeah. I mean, it, oh, I mean, that's literally more than my real car. I, my after money was eight hundred pounds. I'd be well, spending. I think it's big enough. You could just jump on it and drive about, and it'd be fine. Yeah. So, so that's your pick. That's your that pick in twenty eighteen. Yes. See, my pick um, is something that was announced late last year, and I think they were just at the back end of last year. You could get them, maybe, but they weren't going to get them delivered or anything until early this year. So technically, it's a two thousand eighteen model. The Proline Pro MT 4x4. <laughs> that was my choice. You didn't expect that, did no, you? No, I didn't know. You didn't expect that. No. So let me just get into it. The Proline Pro MT. So you're not a fanboy of Proline at all, right? <laughs> Proline are awesome. <laughs> the thing about the Pro MT, the two wheel drive version that came out a couple of years ago, Proline made the world's best hop ups for the Traxxas Stampede. And technically, what Proline did was get all of the upgrades they ever made for the Traxxas Stampede and went, right, we're going to combine this into making the ultimate two wheel drive truck. So essentially, it was a, it was the ultimate ultimate stampede, but in a pro line box, and that's what you got. Yeah. The thing is, Traxxas spat the dummy at that because what previously happened is you bought a Traxxas, Traxxas got money, then you bought pro line parts to make it the ultimate Traxxas. Even though by the end by the end of it, there was no Traxxas left, and it was all pro line. At least they got the money for it in the first place. So that's what, what you want? What pro line did? Yeah, Traxxas, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, what what? Because everything's beefed up. But what they did is they decided, no, we're going to make our own chassis, we're going to fire all the upgrades into one, and they essentially made a super, super stampede. But Traxxas didn't like that because they're getting no money on it. So actually, the whole thing's been scrapped. I think they've fallen out slightly over this. 
and two companies. So what Proline did is they went back to the drawing board and went, right, well, we're going to design our own truck. And because it's not based on the Stampede, it can be any platform. So they designed a 4x4 pla pla platform from the ground up. And every part is now bespoke to this new truck. There's no parts that are for the Stampede at all. This is pure Proline design. Okay. And what a beast. It's a one-tenth monster truck. But everybody that buys one genuinely fits one-eighth truggy electronics in it. One-eighth yes. truggy. Big cans in it like that. It's like proper one-eighth beast in the motor. I think there's room for them in it. Oh yeah, there's room for it. But it's a wee... I mean, it's a one-tenth. But you see people kicking around four-cell, wow. eight, eight-scale electronics, and it handles it. It's an absolute monster. The thing looks like a tank. It's, there is a there was a few niggling issues. There was a, a, a pretty poor um, servo saver, but Proline sent owners a free replacement, the upgrade one, because the because the other one was quite poor. Nice and the, one. there's been a couple of couple of niggly niggly bits, but that's only because people are putting four cell and eighth power through it. I mean, I put two cell and one tenth scale stuff through mine, my two wheel drive, and it's fine. Yeah. So you can imagine if you're upping it to double the voltage and bigger, stronger electronics. No wonder. I mean, you're talking 160 amp or even 200 amp. Eight scale electronics and this one tenth thing just laps up. It's awesome. That's brilliant. I mean, it's expensive. When I mean, you won't get a more expensive one tenth. But so how much are they going for? Oh, jeez. I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're, they're probably approaching four hundred quid for the, for the kit with no electronics, and then you're putting one eighth electronics in it. It's a, it's a costly beast. Yeah. But it's worth it though because it'll be super reliable. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's it's it can handle it. You know. I mean, some I have seen some people bashing it, but bashing it's changed over the years. Bashing it used to be harping around the field. Now bashing it is launching it forty yeah. foot in the air from a skate park. Yeah. You know, anything will break at that. But yeah, I mean, the, the, to me that is just. I mean, I've said it before. One tenth monster trucks are quite possibly. Well, they're definitely some of my favourite. You know, platforms, and this is the best one. And it's just awesome. I love so, it. So, I take it you've given up on your favourite truck as a high roller. <laughs> yeah, the high roller. That was a. That was a. That was another. That was the replacement for the Strata, and that was just as bad. So but it was fun when it went. Oh, it was great when you first got it. Oh, it was awesome when it was going. It just didn't go very well. Stuff. It just broke most of the time. Yeah. Nice one. Well, oh. well I wasn't expecting that at all. No, you weren't. I didn't no. mention it to you. No, you didn't. Say RC of the year for me. Pro Pro MT 4x4 and Super Rock Ray. Basically, we're going for big beastly bashers. <laughs> yes. Beastly bashers. The best that big. That's the best, be best big beastly bashers. You've got to bash beastly. Yeah, you do. Cheers. Cheers. I'll let you have this one. You better get catch up about, there, eh? How have I still got more than you? <laughs> you I did. I had more no, in my glass than I. No. <laughs> I did. I've been separate mines constantly. Yeah, you have You're just like. I think if I rewatched the. No, don't believe it. Okay. Trap so. Bottle. Um, Part number three, I guess. Um, What was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was your uh, favourite drink to drink during videos. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. Favourite drink, yeah. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one. It keeps hitting me every time I try it again. Like, surely it wasn't as bad as I thought last night. Yes, it was. <laughs> right. We were going to talk about our favourite RC manufacturers. Manufacturers, yes. yes. Should I go first this time? You, you may. I will allow it. Okay. Well, in the olden days, I would have said my favourite RC manufacturer was Lossy. Yes. Uh, because I love Lossy, and you know, I, I used to pull my hat. <laughs> the tree. <laughs> And um Tree's trying to make his bubble back. Um <laughs> not a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I had a, a, a number of losses over the years, but but it's slightly changed now. Because lossy used to mean, you know, super high end racing, good handling stuff. Yes. And you used to have in Horizon Hobby at Lossy, you had uh, what was it? Was it Viterra? It was Viterra underneath, wasn't it? I'm yeah, sure yeah. it was. And then you had ECX. Yes. But now Lossy sort of come divided into two. You got TLR, Team Lossy Racing, and Lossy, and it's sort of two separate entities now because you get very much not entry level, so to speak, but more budget brands, yeah. trucks, and stuff. So if you look at Lossy themselves, you've got things like the Ten platform, and it's got like non-adjustable camber linkages, just plastic linkages and stuff. It's not the real Lossy to me. So I would say my favourite manufacturer is TLR, that side of Lossy where yeah, you get the Team Lossy Racing. Yeah. 
Um, so it's all high-end stuff. It's talking about the eight platforms. About my tuning cards, my Triple X S, and my tier. Yeah, my, if, they, uh, if they if they were if that was released now, it would be in the tier. Well, they are actually are. They are. If you go into like for example, if I if I need to find uh, the, like the old instruction manual or exploded part sheet or something from my old lost tuning cards, my Triple X S and my JR XS Type R, they're both on the TLR website, not the Lossy website. Right. And I think I'm not entirely sure about my. Um, Triple X SCT. I think the SCT ready to run, which is what I have, is in the lossy, but the, the sort of r racing setup sheets and everything are in the TLR. I'm not sure about that, but the point is, Team Lossy Racing is like the undiluted what it used to be, and it's the sort of high end stuff. And that to me is my favourite. It's just the Team Lossy Racing, I would say, because you know I I have some great memories of racing that car. It's Triple XS. It punted me up so many levels when I first tried it. It handles great. Even to this day, I can get it dialed in. It goes great because the, the, the <coughs> drivetrain is so free running. It's super smooth. Super yeah. smooth. I mean, it's probably still the smoothest drivetrain you'll come across. Yeah, it makes a really unique noise. Yeah, it's just one belt for, yeah. the, whole, for the whole drivetrain. It's got a really strange sort of unique whistle to it, and um, I love it. I love my Lossy, my, my, my Triple XS. That's my favourite RC car. And as a result, TLR, and my dream RC is still the 8, the 8T. Yeah. The 8T 3.0, unless they release a 4.0 at one point, because there is an 8 buggy 4.0. It's still my my dream RC, so yeah, that's that's my favorite brand. You do have the Mini AT. I which do. It's a great new truck. But the Mini AT, I believe, is lost it itself because right. it was ready to run and it's not raceable. It's in no race class. Right. So, and and, and to be honest with you, that's another good example where Lossy have sort of dropped the ball a little bit because yeah. the eight itself is sorry, the Mini eight itself is okay, but in the the, the Mini AT with the bigger wheels tends to burn out its electronics and stuff, yeah. and it, you get that sort of feeling of. It's not quite the premium brand you kind of hoped it was. Yeah. So my Exotech one is completely different. It's a completely different yeah, animal. Yeah. And um, you know the Exotech one, if it was sold now as that, it would definitely be in TLR. Yeah. But as, yeah, yeah, it's a good example because it's not perfect, and it's quite flawed actually. So um, that would be Lossy, not Team Lossy Racing, and Team Lossy Racing is or who I'm a big fan of. So there we are. I can believe that. I yeah. Can believe that. There we are. Um, I'll go now. Uh huh. So. My favourite <laughs> well, drink <laughs> is eggnog. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I will actually have a drink. Um, oh. My favourite brand. Well, mine. <laughs> what? what? Get it in here. <laughs> Bear in mind, we have to have these finished by the time this subject finishes. It'll be a shot once oh, we're done. done. <laughs> right, go. Right, basically. What was he saying? <laughs> My, my favourite my favorite brand of RC, uh, for a reason, is Team Associated. Um, you only have one. No, you have two. Yeah, you have got a TC5. Oh, a TC5 is yeah. 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 That's what I say. Yeah? You, you spoiled a Christmas surprise there, did you? <laughs> no. Um, no, it's uh, basically Mike introduced me to the RC game. Um, not going to give him any credit for it, because he doesn't deserve it. Uh, basically... How long ago was it now? Oh, uh, it's got to be. Oh, I mean, we raced for five years, up two years ago, seven years, probably seven, half, eight years ago, maybe. Yeah, about that, about yeah. that. Mike introduced me to the, the car of my dreams, basically. Right, this thing, this thing, like, I love this car. It's my TC3. Uh, you might have heard me mention it before, but yeah. So he sold it to me for twenty-five pounds, and did I? Twenty-five pounds. Twenty-five pounds. What a mug, honestly. I know. Because it's worth so much. You do. And a free battery. You what? You do me some money. No. You do me some money. No. No. Right. Okay. I look after that car. It's, it's, it went to a good home. It has, to be fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he first introduced me to it, and I fell in love with it straight away. Um. It's a great car. It's um. We actually we got and I got into RC in that way that we started racing at the institute. And Which are local town hall sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Mike started with your TT01 because yeah, I wasn't that, wasn't that good with the car, like um, in terms of driving. I wasn't used to it because it's my, my my very first proper RC car. And then I eventually started getting upgrades with it, getting more comfortable with the car. Wait a minute. I think the music stopped. Let me just. It's professional over here. Let me just let me just sort, sort this out. Play it on repeat. There you go, nothing happened. <coughs> so, yeah, and we were racing at the Institute. He started off with his TT01. Which was modified. 
modified, yeah. yeah. Uh, you had, you didn't have your, your fast. You did have your fast mode. Yeah. I had what? Well, Revenge had, of the Monster. I had my second best Revenge of the Monster Pro in it. My best one was still in the two still in the losses. Yeah. So basically, he had his um, sort of his amateur racing sort of touring car for guys that weren't quite up to his speed yet. And eventually, I started getting more comfortable with my TC3, started dialing it a bit more, upgrading it as I went. And eventually, you couldn't keep using your TT01 because we were always catching up to you. Couldn't do it. Like the TT01 is a, is a sort of entry level car. His was a club racer car. Yeah. And as he sort of understood setup and understood how to get it dialed in, his level was keep we kept climbing. The, the TT01 had sort of plateaued. Yeah. And he was overhauling me, and it got to the point where you had to help me again. If he if he was using his TC3 and he was had it dialed in. There's no way I was keeping up with them, which is understandable, absolutely understandable. Because it's a great car. It's, it's a great car, yeah. It's, and eventually, we, we I mean, we had, you got your lossy out. I got my lossy out, which is something I used to, this this, this lossy had a sort of uh, magical reputation, because it, it used to be my race car, and it was yeah. like, this car is used for racing only, and I had to use it, I had to use this car in order to try and beat him with yeah. his TC3. So we had, we've had some magical races. Oh, brilliant races between the two of them. And it, it was good because it got to the point that I would start to set up my loss and get dialed in as well, but his car was always there. There was there was there was the same sort of ultimate potential, and it was it got to the point where we were properly swapping lap times. Yeah. You know, it was brilliant, yeah. and it was funny because no one else could hold a candle to him at all. There was a lot of HBI sprints and old Schumacher SSTs, yeah. and, and oh, there was nothing. There was nothing that could keep up with them. It was great fun. It was really it's good fun. Really you know, good fun. Just what a brilliant time. So yeah, my team is so set. I'm a total fanboy of it because my TC3 and. Um, so that would be my pick. But not only that, only after I got, had my TC3, that I started to know about Team Associated. And they are a premium brand. You know, they, they only do high-end, you know, touring cars and other trucks and stuff. Yeah, like they that. do a couple of bashes, but it's all, you know, it's all. Yeah, yeah they were on seven point two now. TC seven point two. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And they're all real high-end, proper. Come and 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 you know, regardless of who's the best car in the world at any one point. You, the TC, the TC, whatever it is at the time, is always there as well. They're always dialed in. And I believe they've won more championships than anybody else as well. The proper racing outfit. Yeah. They're a bit like TLR. Yeah. They're a bit like TLR. So, just purely on the TC3, it would be Team Associated for me. And it could have easily been Yokomo, actually, because, could, yeah. because you had the choice between buying the Yokomo MR4 TC Custom and the Associated TC3. Yeah. It had to be the TC3 though. It just, it worked out perfectly. It did. But I wonder what, I wonder, looking back, I wonder what swung it. Which, why you chose one over the other? No. No idea. No, I can't remember. No idea. I think no I just idea. probably like the look of TC3 a little bit better. That's probably what it came down to, yeah. So that was it. Um, and now what we need to do... Oh. <laughs> I'm like a burst couch. I know, you won't believe what happened. So... Remember I mentioned his stupid phone, stupid 10 minutes, stupid limit on stupid recording, stupid videos? Well, we just wrapped it up and said, oh no, we have to finish it. And we finished it. I was mindless of it this full. And we we downed it. it. We basically downed it. We downed it. Almost. And the camera cut off before we downed it. So just literally. Yeah, so we've had to put more in to because we proved, yeah, we did say that we'd finish. <sighs> you go first. Down it. Oh. They're going to lump bits, isn't it? Oh. 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 Ah! Your turn. Oh. I reckon if I, you know, stir this for or shake it for long enough, it will just become solid. Go on, then. Go on, have a, have a wee swig. Have a wee swig. Lumpy butter, lumpy butter, <laughs> lumpy butter. Oh, he did it. <laughs> Get the tricks, man. <laughs> Cheers. That was brutal. <laughs> ah, that's disgusting. It tastes like cow paw mixed with eggs and custard. Okay, I'm getting you for Christmas. What am I doing? Ugh. Ah! Go ahead, my bed. Oh. Well, that's it then. That's um, that was for your your entertainment. That was for your entertainment. We um, 
had the worst drink ever made by anyone. Hope you enjoyed it, because yeah. I didn't. No, <laughs> that's true. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our discussion videos. And we'll obviously guys. do the same thing again next year. It's a tradition now. Yes. And uh, we'll have the same hats and the same jumpers. Bye. And uh, yeah, have a great Christmas, everyone. Hope you get lots of great presents and uh, very, you know, lots of RC late stuff. So, yeah. Let us know in the comments what yeah, you're getting for Christmas. Get. And let us know. Won't we'll be jealous at all. Right. And also, what's your favourite? Um, you know, your favourite oh, manufacturer of all, yes, your manufacturer, RC manufacturer of all time. Let us know. What's your favourite? What would you reckon is the first time? What we've discussed about? Let us know your opinion. One thing I will just sign off with. We were talking about recommended first trucks. There is a new version of the jump shot coming out. HBI jump shot. The HBI jump shot. Hey, this is my jump shot. So, if they solve everything, who knows? Could be another contender. Yeah. Because, I mean, there was, it was a good truck when it was going, but you had some issues. Well, it was terrible. Like, the gearbox was made of cheese. Yeah. So if they make a gearbox for anything other than cheese, maybe cucumber. Maybe. But, um, yeah, so that could be an option in the future as well. But right now, we just don't know. It's not out yet. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you again on the next episode. Yeah, Merry Christmas and Happy New Cheers. Year. Bye, everyone. Bye.